guys, today's video is going to be an in-depth look, sort of like demo, tips and tricks, all about how I achieve the most flawless finish foundation on every application, no matter what foundation I'm using. Just a little bit of a disclaimer though, I'm not actually a makeup artist, I am 100% self-taught, and really the only experience I have is on myself and on my own skin type. So a little bit of background, I have a combination skin type. So in summer, I definitely lean a little bit more oily. So my T-zone in particular gets quite oily. And then in winter, I tend to get a little bit more dry. So my skin type sort of varies depending on the season. And then I also have overall not really any textural issues. I just have enlarged pores and I also have some pigmentation. So that's just a little bit of background about my skin. Just because if you do have a different skin type to me, some of the things that I do may not necessarily be the best method for you. But in saying that, no matter what your skin type is, no matter what your concerns are, if you're looking for some new tricks or if you're having difficulties with your foundation, maybe you can try something that I do and see how it works for you. So without further ado, I think I'm just going to jump straight on into the actual video because I'm warning you, there's a lot of talking and there's a lot to it. So I hope you guys enjoy. Give me a thumbs up if you do and let me know in the comments any of your tips and tricks as well. So let's jump straight into it. So I'm going to talk all about the things I do for my skin to prep it. And the number one thing that has definitely really changed up my makeup game is shaving my face. So for me personally, I have a lot of peach fuzz on my face. It all usually concentrates around here and also my sideburns tend to grow a fair bit down on my actual cheeks and I get rid of that hair and it just makes my life so much easier with foundation application. I'm currently using this this really random little razor that has no like brand name on it at all. My mum actually bought it um, off Facebook. She's one of those people that buys all that gimmicky stuff off Facebook and I'm really glad she got this one. As you can see when you open it up, it kind of looks a little bit similar to like a men's razor. It's a little circular motion one and it just, it's just really simple. Like it's not fancy at all. It's just like a little facial razor and I shave my face like probably once a month. I don't do it heaps often. I just do it when I get a fair bit of peach fuzz, fuzz, fuzz build up. I'm just feeling myself, feeling myself, <laughs> I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling my face now and my facial hair isn't too bad but I think I will just for the sake of like showing you how that little razor works. So as you guys can see, it just is like in circular motions. I'm just trying to see if you can see any clumps of hair. You can't really. Is it going on me? No, because I don't really have much hair on my face at the moment. So I should have I should have waited till I had a hairy ass face to show you. But anyway, you guys will get the gist. I think one of the most common misconceptions with shaving is that shaving promotes hair growth. It doesn't promote hair growth. All it does though is it will make you feel like your hair is a little bit more coarse and thicker and it's because shavers typically cut the hair follicles straight whilst naturally the way your hair um, actually grows is it sort of tapers but when you shave it you cut it straight off so it feels a little bit more thicker and stubbly that it doesn't like mean it's actually promoting hair growth so don't fear if you shave it's not going to make you like a hairy wildebeest all of a sudden doesn't work like that so yeah <laughs> So I'm just going to wipe down with my micellar water. Now the next really important step with skincare is exfoliating. Now they suggest you should exfoliate your face two to three times a week. I actually personally don't exfoliate that much. I only exfoliate my face once a week and I typically do it on a Friday night or on a Thursday night or on a Saturday morning. Just nice and close to the weekend because I don't actually wear full beat, full glam makeup every day. On a daily basis, I just about wear nothing actually. Go in with my standard Real You Cleanser and my Bare Minerals Cleansing Brush. As you guys can see, it's a little brush and it has like a silicone pad in the center and it's got these brushes on the outside. So all you do is just pop your product in the center of the little brush and you just scrub your face with it. So it's the same sort of theory as a Clarisonic, except obviously a Clarisonic is electric and it'll buff your skin about and it'll just help to remove any dead skin, any flaky skin, anything that's on the surface of your face that could actually disturb like your foundation. So if you've got scaly or flaky dry skin and you put foundation on throughout the day, it's going to just flake off or when you apply it, it's going to look like really cakey. So it's important to like really buff and polish your skin and get it down to its like most flawless layer possible. So next up, you know how they say not to prime is a crime? Well, I think the actual crime is not to moisturize. 
the amount of people that I know that like love makeup but don't look after their skin in regards to skincare is mind boggling to me because skincare goes hand in hand with makeup. The more you look after your skin, the more flawless your foundation and your makeup's going to look. So it's really important that you use a good quality moisturizer. Now I don't really care what brand I use as long as my daytime moisturizer is light and it contains no oil. The reason I say no oil is because I'm more of a combination skin type and I find if I use like an oil based moisturizer during the daytime, it can make my foundation separate throughout the day. So I prefer to keep my oil, oil based products for my nighttime regime and I just steer clear of it during the day. So at the moment, I'm loving this moisturizer by Estee Lauder. It is just a very nice, light, hydrating moisturizer. It says it's like pore minimizing. I don't know necessarily if it is or not. I haven't like taken before and afters to compare. However, I do really like it. I've already used like half of it actually. That's how much I love it. So I usually just go in with two pumps of this. I always like to let this sink in for a good like 10 to 15 minutes before I go in with any other product. It's so important to just let your products really soak into the skin because if you just go ahead and apply your makeup on straight away, you're not giving your chance your skin a chance to like really absorb the nutrients from the product you just put on your face. So while that's soaking in, don't forget an eye cream. I've been using a few different ones, but for daytime, I've been loving the Benefit It's Potent Eye Cream. It just gives me a little bit of extra hydration on those terrible under eye bags that I have. So I just dig my finger in a tiny bit and I just pop it directly under my eyes. Just helps like for your product to not settle under your eyes and just yet again keep them nice and hydrated. Your under eyes can get very dehydrated too actually so if you're not using an under eye cream I would recommend using one because the skin under there is so delicate and we want to look after it. So while all those products are soaking in you guys know I personally am a big fan of a good old facial mist. Now these are not a necessity I just love how it makes my skin feel. I like to go in with anything that's like hydrating that can give my skin just that extra extra bit of nutrients. So at the moment I have three favorites. I have the Mario Badescu Skincare Facial Spray and then I've also got the Too Faced 3 in 1 Hangover Spray. And then my number one, the one you just cannot beat, the holy grail product is the MAC Fix Plus. I'm actually surprised at how many people do not use this on their bare face before they do their makeup. A lot of people use it as a setting spray but I do use this as a prepping spray before I put makeup on and I also use it if my makeup looks a little bit cakey and I need to take that cake off then I'll drench myself in this too but I'm going to give myself a little spritzeroo now ah. <laughs> so next up is primer now primers are another thing that's a little bit more subjective some people think they're a total gimmick and they do nothing and they're not worth using some people like me religiously use like one or two of the same primers I've tried quite a few over the years and I just keep gravitating back to my Too Faced hangover primer every tutorial I do you guys would see this it is just my favorite it feels like it's another skincare step to be honest and I just feel like it makes my skin feel yet again that extra bit of nourishment and it just makes my skin feel so smooth that whenever I wear it I feel like my foundation just glides on so perfectly over the top. I also like using primers because I feel like it creates another barrier between your skin and your makeup because like I said a lot of makeup doesn't have any benefits um, for your skin ultimately so if you can create a layer between your pores and your makeup it's just another added bonus because it means it's not going to sink into your pores and cause breakouts or cause any congestion or anything like that so I'm a big fan of this primer. When I'm applying my primer I try not to rub too vigorously Seriously, I just sort of pat it into the skin. Now we are ready to move into the foundation. I don't really know what foundation I want to use today. Um, I have probably like six favorites and they're all sort of different. They're all kind of different finishes and everything. I'm just trying to decide which one I feel like using. Um, I might use my Huda Beauty one. It's been a hot minute since I've used it. Um, I don't reach for it as much as I would like to because I feel like the shade is like the slightest bit too dark. But we'll just see how we go today. I'll just give it a whirl. Now, when it comes to foundations, no matter what sort of foundation is, no matter what finish it is, I always apply it with a kabuki brush. I don't really care what shape they are. Um, they can be any of Sigma's kabukis. And if you guys are interested in shopping from Sigma, I do have a discount code. It is an affiliate code. If you just enter Hannah at checkout, 
out that'll take 10% off your orders and I also make a small commission if you use that code. So all the brushes I mentioned will be linked in the description as well. But I've got three here. I love them all equally. I've got the angled kabuki which is F84. I've got a round top kabuki which is an F82 and I've also got a 3D HD kabuki. So it's really important to give all your foundations a big shake before you use them. It just helps to mix all the pigment in with the other ingredients and you'll get the best out of your formulations. So I'm using the shade Toasted Coconut, which is 20, uh, which is 240N. I feel like I need custard, which I think is 220, but I'll make it work. I will just use a lighter concealer and stuff and it'll be fine. I just feel like wearing this because I haven't worn it in a minute. So I always get a compact and I squirt my foundation out onto a compact rather than putting it onto my hand or directly onto my face. And I'm just going to take my round kabuki, like I said, and I dip straight into the foundation and I just start patting. Now when I first learned about makeup, a lot of people used to always suggest buffing foundation into your skin. I feel like buffing is literally the biggest no-no, especially if you're not shaving your face. And the reason why is because buffing is just going to stir up all of that peach fuzz and it's just going to get your foundation all caught in your facial hair. So I pat because what it does is it not only presses the product into the skin, but it also lays flat any facial hair you may have. This is a very um, full coverage foundation too. I'll get up close in a second and just show you the finish. What I do as well, if I find that like my foundation doesn't look super flawless just off applying it with a brush, then I will pat over the top with an actual beauty sponge and that will usually help just really lay it all down. Um, and it, that's a wet beauty sponge too, by the way, guys, not a dry one, a wet one. So I do have a couple pimples on this side of the chin, but overall the texture of my skin just looks nice and smooth and really flawless. And yeah, I don't even think I need to use like a beauty sponge on top or anything. I'm just going to put a little bit more foundation on my nose and just really blend that foundation into my hairline, just so we don't have like a dirty, obnoxious foundation line. Now, I didn't even use all that foundation. I should have literally used one squirt. I'm going to be using the Born This Way Concealer by Too Faced in the shade Light today, and I'm going to be popping it where I usually would. So it's in a lot of places. Not everyone likes to highlight as much as I do, and you certainly don't have to. This step is definitely optional. Some people like to just conceal their under eyes. Some people like to highlight their chin and their forehead as well. Totally up to you, whatever floats your boat and whatever you like the look of. I'm personally doing a little bit extra highlighting today in particular because my foundation is a tiny bit too dark for my chest right now. So whenever it's a little bit too dark, I just usually highlight the crapola out of my face and it works out fine. So I'm just going to take my 3D blender and blend it all out. Now, because this foundation is a matte foundation as well, if you're having a hard time blending out your concealer at all on top, you can definitely take some of your MAC Fix Plus and you can literally spritz all over your face. So you could just Give yourself a good little drench, just like that, and then keep blending and it'll help blend out your actual concealer as well. Because it will just rehydrate the foundation again, just so it all blends a little bit more seamlessly. Now, next up, it's time to set our face. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you already know what I'm going to be using. My Holy Grail, and it is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finishes. Now, I use the shade Light for under my eyes, and I use an F35 Tapered Highlighting Brush. And then for all of my face, I use the shade Medium. Now, these are a foundation powder, so they can be used on their own for a more lighter coverage. I find these just really help set my foundation and help it last longer throughout the day, but it also adds nearly like a blurring effect to my skin, so it gives me that little bit more flawless finish with any foundation. So I just, nothing compares to these powders today. Like, as you guys can see, very loved. I've hit pan massively on this, so I'm going to use light, like I said, to set under my eyes. So now I'm going in with the shade medium and I'm taking my F30 large powder face brush and I'm just going to powder the entire perimeter of my face. This is like a very fine powder too, so it's not going to make you feel cakey using it to set your face. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, I'm hoping you can, but my face is not cakey in the slightest. That is a fair few layers and 
it doesn't look cakey. So you don't have to worry about layering. Layering is fine as long as you're blending things properly and you're using the right sort of layers. Okay, so now I've got all my base products down. I'm ready to move on to like my brows and my eye makeup. But before I do that, I always like to set my face with a setting spray. At the moment, my favorite setting spray is the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray Long Lasting. Now, the reason I personally choose this one is because combination skin type. I get quite an oily forehead throughout the day, so it just sort of helps to keep my makeup that little bit more intact, that little bit longer, and helps to stop the oils coming through as quickly. If you are not an oily or combination skin type, and if you're a little bit more to the normal to dry side, you might just want to go in with a MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. This is not going to set your foundation like cement however it's just going to take any sort of powderiness off the surface and just really sort of blend it all together a little bit more so it just kind of depends on your skin type in winter when I'm more on the dry side because in winter I can sometimes get really dry to the point that like, my skin hurts and if that's the case then I would definitely use this over this but at the moment my forehead still likes to get its shine on so I'm using this one you need to give this a good shake before you spritz it over your face as well And also guys, it's really important to remember as well, as all the products warm up with the temperature of the surface of your skin, it's going to settle down a little bit more as well. So if you're finding you look a little bit cakey, probably in like an hour or so, you're probably not going to look cakey at all. That's what I personally find anyways, especially in winter, like when your body's sort of a little bit colder, it just takes that little bit longer for the products to melt into your skin. So here is another up close look at my skin. She's looking, she's looking good. I definitely cannot complain about my foundation today. That's for sure. I'm just going to go finish the rest of my makeup and I'll come up, come up, come back and give you guys my summary. <laughs> okay guys, so here is my overall finished makeup for today. I do have a tutorial going up on the rest of the makeup, so stay tuned for that if you're interested in seeing it. I tested out the new NARS Wanted palette, so it's really pretty. I just did a pretty simple, typical Hannah smoky eye, but I'm going to upload a full video on that as well. So stay tuned for that. Pretty sure I covered everything that I feel like is essential in the quest for the most ultimately flawless, perfect foundation. So I hope you guys learned maybe a few little tips and tricks or you just found this entertaining to watch or you just took something away from it. So yeah, thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me some comments below so I can chat to you and I'll be talking to you all really soon. Bye.